Hello, I'm Marty Bell. And I'm Allison Kay. And we are The Hex, your NWA World Women's Tag Team Champions. Catch us this Saturday for NWA Hard Times 2 and Power Tapings in Atlanta. You're watching the Battleground Podcast. What's up, you guys? Welcome back to another episode of the Battleground Podcast. And I feel as if we should say that this is NWA week because earlier this week, we sat down in studio and we talked to Medusa. Of course, NWA Hard Times is this Saturday on Fight. It starts at 7 o'clock. And you can actually win a free code from us. Uh, go to Twitter, at Battle on Air. That's where we've given away a code. And thanks to our friends at Fight. But let me bring in my tag team partner. There he is, the man, the myth, the legend, Eli. What are you doing? Are you just like... I was covering up my shirt so everyone, I, we can unveil who, who the guest you, you is. You do realize that they get a notification when they get this podcast. It's like, you know, the hex is on New the episode. Battleground yeah, podcast. Okay. Yeah. Oh, okay. <laughs> so so that's... We don't even have to really say much of any of that because let's bring in our guest today, the NWA Women's Tag Team Champions. The hex is on the show with us. Thank you, ladies, for coming on. How are y'all doing? I'm doing great. I'm a little frazzled, so if you see me uh, <laughs> sweating a bit, uh, I'm in the middle of a move. Uh, so there's a lot going on, but we are really, really happy to be here today. Which is more frazzling, wrestling for the titles or moving? Moving. Because <laughs> no. I am confident in mine and my partner's ability. So I'm, I'm, not, I'm never nervous. I don't know what's not. I, I, it's never unsure what's going to happen. We know we're going to walk in champions. We're going to walk out champions. I have no idea what's going to happen with this move. It's 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 stressful. And exactly. I don't have my tag team partner to help Ooh. me. Look okay, at Okay, I have to say, I did Look see those that. in person. They are incredible in person. Those are some of the best belts in the business right now. They still smell fresh. They do. Oh, oh, man. They're so good. Yeah. And when I, I was Look at that. Man. In the middle of a move, she still has her championship on hand. She is ready. Do you have well, that in like a, a side box when you're moving? Like make sure that that doesn't get lost in translation. <laughs> Oh, this 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 does not leave my um. I have a special like bag for it, and that bag is in another special bag that I literally do not let out of my sight. Yes, oh, I bet. Well, and to be fair, you you're never really trained how to move. I mean, you get the principle, take it from one place to the other. But there's, I mean, you're not. I, I don't know how to. I mean, you just throw shit in a box, and you know what I mean. Like, there's not a. It's we're it. not really. It's not a life skill we're taught. So it's not. Uh, and instead of I learning hate, the Pythagorean theorem, this is what we should be learning in school. Exactly. exactly. And exactly. you just you just sharp it on the box. Glass, do not break. <laughs> yeah. Books. Wrestling bedroom boots. one. Wrestling, yeah. yeah. Um, <laughs> but of course, again, it is NWA week here on the Battleground Podcast. Fight TV this Saturday night, 7 o'clock, NWA Hard Times 2. Of course, you guys got a match, which we're going to talk about that here in a little bit. But I want to ask this question, kind of getting to know the Hex. And you guys have been friends. You guys have been foes and everything in between. What led to the decision to form the Hex? It really started during the pandemic. Well, we're still in a pandemic, but it started during 2020, the, during the initial quarantine. Um, we were kind of in a spot where we were figuring out what we wanted to do. And we're like, this is it almost felt like a bucket list thing. Like, yeah, we need to tag. Why aren't we tagging? Right. We've been friends for so long. We've been friends for over 10 years. So we've always known that we've had really good chemistry, uh, whether it was as opponents or, you know, just working in the same companies, but we never got the chance to tag. And so we knew that if it was going to happen, we were going to make it happen. And we did. For sure. And it was a, a great decision because we sat here and, you know, thought about it when, when we first found out about both of y'all teaming together, I was like, it's a no brainer. If there's ever a women's tag team championship, we already know who's going to get it. <laughs> get it first and you were before ready. we before we even knew that there was a tournament happening for it yeah and of course the name is perfect you know halloween we're big halloween fans so you love it um so you know speaking of the nwa tournament you guys were obviously favored to win um and of course you did and have those pretty belts what does it mean to you guys to become the first nwa women's world tag team champions Oh man. So, I mean, I feel like Marty can handle this one, especially because of the whole background with the Dominican Republic and everything. It's like extra special. It's, it's, it was very special for us to one, come back to NWA, uh, do it together and do it in such a big way. Uh, for me, uh, obviously being with my best friend, there's, there's no better feeling, but the Dominican Republic has never recognized um, Jack Van Anel for his championship win against Ric Flair. Mm -hmm. uh, so I am the first Dominican 
uh, champion that is recognized by the NWA. And it's crazy. It, it, it's crazy to think that there is no longer an asterisk. There's no longer a, well, like, no, it was definitive. Mm-hmm. We won those titles. We earned our spot in the history books and it really could not have come with, uh, you know, a better package. For sure. And, you know, I, I kind of want to pull, I guess, pull back the curtain a little bit because we, we talked about it when we found out y'all were uh, being a tag team and we knew that if there was a tournament or if there was anything for a championship that y'all were going to be the winners, which we were pretty much right on the money when it happened. <laughs> when did you, I guess, kind of pulling back the curtain a little bit, when did you find out that, hey, y'all are going to make history and you're going to win the titles? It's... It's interesting because we always say you never believe anything in wrestling until the day after it happens. So I guess we could say that uh, August 29th is when we knew that <laughs> uh, it, right. it was it was happening and we knew that the titles were ours. Uh, in this business, everything can change at the drop of a dime, whether it be because, you know, somebody missed a flight, an injury, things going in a different direction. So we didn't we didn't know that we were we believed in us, but we didn't yeah. know, you know, what exactly was going to happen until until it happened yeah and and that's the good thing is because you could see in that match when we were watching it like you could see the emotion of hey we did this like this is us we made history here comes medusa walking out giving you guys and i I thought for a second there when i saw that i was like are we about to see medusa like managing the hex like is this about to happen yeah it was was, I mean, the door is always open. Yeah, I don't know. Medusa wanted to fight me at one point, so I, you never really know what's going to happen, which direction it's going to go. Yeah. yeah, we actually talked about your match against Santana Garrett when she presented the belt. Um, yes. Yeah, so uh, there's definitely some history there, it seems. And she was being very coy about everything. We we kind of presented, like, we had mentioned, you know, Sting, he's came back and he's working a limited schedule at 61. D- does she think she's got a couple of matches in her? And she's like, We'll see. I've like, been pushing for it God. since since I won the NWA Women's World Championship. I've been pushing for a match with Medusa. So, oh man, that's just. I mean, it could happen. And I, I, I mean, she and she was in great shape. I mean, I was like, holy crap! And she probably... knows where I'm at. So, yeah. <laughs> Oof. You're man. both. Find her a tag team partner if she wants to. I think her and Jazz would make a good tag team. Ooh. Holy crap! Are you kidding me? That's incredible. Are, wow. That is I my. Have... That is one of my bucket list matches that I never had a chance to have. So. And Whew. I was sitting All here right, thinking, we're putting it out there then. We're putting we're it putting there. it in the universe because I was sitting here thinking because usually at the end of the show we like to ask like what is everybody's dream match? But I think you just booked the dream match for everybody. <laughs> we don't even have to ask that question. I mean, Medusa and Jazz versus the Hex. Billy, wow. if you're listening, we're down. Well, and we we've we we're not quite like first name basis with Billy, but he's been on the show twice, so we might have some <laughs> Might have some pull there. So we 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 could put some pull out there. And I think and Medusa was saying the other day when she was in the studio, she's got one more match left in her. And you know, I, I believe Jazz still has a match in her because I mean she mm. she I know she recently retired, but I mean she could still go when I was watching oh, yeah. those impact mm-hmm. matches. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Why and not? Team, I feel like a tag team is a way to go, especially if you want to like ease back into it. You know, you only got to do half the work. So yeah. oh, exactly. exactly. And I will say many people may not even realize this, but Jazz and I were tag team champions um ourselves. So, Ooh, what so that even adds way, more. You know, having it all come full circle. Um, Oof. we're very excited that Jazz is going to be honored at hard times. So that's something that we are definitely looking forward to. Uh, you know, may- maybe Jazz is uh, about to get jumped. I don't know. I don't know. Yeah, who Ooh. knows? Who but knows? Here's the yeah. other thing, though. Like now that you say, because uh, you talk about you and Jazz being tag team partners, I wonder if, like, in the back of Allison's mind, is like, well, you know, they used to be tag team partners. We're tag team partners. Do I have to worry that Marty might want to get back well, with here's Jazz? The thing. We've been in quite a few tag teams <laughs> each in the past. I know that I'm not her first, okay, but I am now her only. That's yes, what matters. You're the best. And you're I'm not the, the best first, one. The best. There you go. <laughs> so, you know, NWA Empowered turned out to be one of the best pay-per-views of the year. And uh, you had Legends, Mickey James. You had Gail Kim. You had the uh, the unannounced uh, arrival of Kong and her retirement that night. We talked to Gail Kim about that. And she's like, nobody knew that Kong was doing that. Nope. And she was like, she was like, I'm sitting there trying to keep it all together mm-hmm. and just bawling my eyes out when that uh, happened. They, they had me crying in the club. I'll be honest. <laughs> Man, <laughs> in and, the club. And, and of course, Medusa, all working with talent to put on this amazing show. What did that weekend mean for for y'all as performers as well as fans? Everything. Oh my gosh, that whole weekend was everything. The crowd 
was insane in the good way. I will never forget that. I will never forget that reaction we got because I mean, we're not assholes. You know, we don't go out there and just think like, oh, we're, people are going to react this way. I never expect a certain type of reaction. Of course, you always hope for it. But the reaction we got, like I couldn't even have, I would have never imagined that everyone would just be so behind it. I don't know. Yeah. I just, I guess I just don't want to get too ahead of myself. I'm focused on the match. I'm not, of course I want the fans to be entertained, but I'm, yeah. I'm not expecting them to do a certain thing. You yeah. know, you can't force people to feel a certain way, but it certainly seems like they felt what we were feeling, which yeah. is very sure. special. There's so much history in that building and maybe it's just, maybe that bled out into, you know, the fans and, and I don't know. It was just, it was so exciting. It was my first time uh, wrestling in St. Louis, like in, in actual St. Louis uh, after living here in, in Missouri for almost five years. So it's, it's been very, very exciting. Uh, it, it, it really was like, everybody keeps asking us and we're like, it was magical. And like, it sounds so cliche, but there really are no other words. And just like, it was perfect. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, the, that night and the next night were both just, I mean, I think everything was booked correctly. Uh, you know, having the, the historic, aspect to it having rick flair show up which your opinions may vary on that but you know still bringing home a legend and all that kind of stuff i mean it was i mean almost picture perfect really i mean it, it was, was. I, it was like an incredible weekend i mean we had a blast with those pay-per-views and of course nwa's got another incredible weekend this weekend hard times too this saturday on fight it's down there in atlanta so if you still uh want to go you can grab tickets uh of course make sure you hit up the nwa's website but if you can't make it to atlanta of course, you can watch it on Fight 7 o'clock this Saturday night. And, uh, I mean, it, it's it's a stacked card because I was looking at it earlier. And it's like, I think the scary thing for, for y'all's match is you don't have to be pinned to lose those titles. That's the scary part for y'all. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That is yeah. definitely the part that um, I was a little surprised. Like, we didn't know that it was going to be a triple threat tag match. And it seems a little excessive to put in two teams instead of one. But I also understand that they don't, I guess they don't really have like a solid contender right now for us. Yeah. So, um, I mean, they're definitely worthy opponents. It does make me, I don't even want to say I'm nervous, but that is an aspect we have to consider is that, it, mm -hmm. you know, I have full confidence in our abilities, but it's not just up to us now. We have to make sure that someone else doesn't mess it up for us. So. Right. Mm -hmm. right. And I think that's something also to, to think about. We, we are a team. We have worked together now. We know each other in and out of the ring. And all of those women that are in the ring with us are amazing on their own. As a team, I don't know how they're going to be. And I think that's definitely the biggest advantage that we have. Uh, that the studios are, we, we can say that that's our home. We are, mm -hmm. we are coming back home. Mm -hmm. uh, so we understand, uh, we understand the crowd. We understand each other. It, it is going to be tricky though. Uh, I hadn't really thought about that, that we don't have to be pinned to lose our titles. So it, it definitely does add an, an extra, an extra level of threat here. Right. Yeah. Adds more familiar. pressure to the champs. Oh, oh, sorry. Go ahead. I was just going to say, it just adds more pressure to the champs. It does add a little more pressure, but it should add a lot of pressure for them as well. Um, yeah. The same goes for them. They don't have to be pinned to lose the whole match. Exactly. And we also have an advantage because that is our home. Like Marty said, like we're comfortable with that studio. I'm so looking forward to being back in front of that studio audience so much. And also hard times is very near and dear to my heart. So hard times 2020 is where I had one of my favorite matches of my entire career, which was against Thunder Rosa. Mm -hmm. Didn't turn out in my favor, but this hard times is going to be different. And it yeah, is. I'm so excited. And if you get there and you want to throw a cheap shot to Sandoval, don't don't hesitate to throw that at him. You know, because we see him. It's it's a big UT thing in Alabama. We mean him. But yeah, I mean it's it's gonna be fun. And like you said, I mean, y'all have like history as a tag team partner. You look at you know uh, Kylie Ray and Tootie Lynn. Like I don't know if they've ever teamed together outside of this. You know, I don't think if uh, Lady well, like Frost, Marty said, like those yeah. two are great competitors at, by themselves, but like not every time you combine them, does it make magic? Yes. You know? And they also, I believe, have wrestled each other. So that does give them a little bit a of little, an advantage. Mm -hmm. Like they know each yeah. other. I don't even know if Lady Frost and Natalia know each other. I don't even know. Yeah, if they that's a, that's a diff mm -hmm. Yeah. It's really hard to anticipate what the other person's going to do if you don't know anything about them. If you've never even met them, it's just kind of. It might they might as well be a stranger, you know. So yeah. it's kind of harder get in that rhythm and get those combo moves and all that kind of stuff. As opposed to you guys, I mean, obviously thick as thieves, you know. I think for us too is um we know each other well in and out of the ring, and we are also there for the 
we know what needs to be done. We know what each other's strengths and weaknesses are. You know, I know where to back her up. She knows where to back me up. They don't have that. And that is very mm -hmm. important. Even uh, a lot of people were surprised to know how many matches we'd actually had uh, as a team before winning these titles. But we had plenty of years of, you know, every time she was wrestling, I would go watch her matches. She would watch mine. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, we, we, we know each other so well that I think that is, that experience is definitely going to come into play uh, with this match as well. And I would say even more so, we trust each other. Not even just about uh, knowing each other wrestling, but as human beings, we trust each other. And I think that's such a huge aspect that even if these girls are studying each other or what, you know, looking up what moves they do and maybe even practicing in the ring a little bit together, they don't have the bond that we have. They don't have the mm -hmm. trust that we have. Well, and that kind of goes to two points, the trust and then the full circle. I mean, when we first started watching the kind of the modern uh, power, uh, you know, Marty had kind of lined herself with someone else. And you know, <laughs> she there, backs away backs slowly up, yeah, from the screen. Yeah. Now we're, we're past that. There we go. That's, that's her. We've moved on. We've, we've, we've moved on. It. But I mean, you, you guys have been involved in some very heated storylines in that building. And now you're returning as best friends and the champions. So there's a lot, there's a lot going on. Listen, if you watched the last of episode of NWA power that Allison and I were both on, you know, I came out there and I, and I, and I, and I talked very, very loudly. And Allison came down and she talked me down. She she said a couple of things that, you know, made a lot of sense. And mm -hmm. uh, we were able, during the pandemic, we realized, uh, you know, when you're stuck at home, all you have are your thoughts. All you have mm -hmm. are your thoughts and your friends. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, we reached out to each other and we decided that, you know, we're going to let bygones be bygones, you know, and uh, we started fresh. So... Yeah, nothing like a pandemic to put things in perspective. You know? Yeah, right. So like, this isn't worth Seriously. it. This pettiness. Yes. Yeah. Well, that's good. Well, and obviously the results are speaking for yourself. So you know. Themselves. Yeah, absolutely. Well, so we we just talked to Medusa recently, Hall of Famer. Um, she's beyond excited and passionate about her new role with NWA. She had obviously what we've been talking about. Great things to say about Empower that whole weekend. How does working with legends like her, like Mickey, like Gail, how does that? How is that strengthening the women's division in the NWA? First of all, anybody who knows me knows how obsessed I am with Mickey James and how much I love her <laughs> and how much I've always admired her and looked up to her. So that whole like "don't meet your heroes" thing, uh, Mickey has 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 shown us that that is a uh, that that's not the case here. Uh, it's it's so refreshing to be in a room full of women that want to help each other and that are setting such good examples that are out there looking out for you and as a collective, we just want our division to do well. We want our pay-per-views to do well. We want our matches. We want everyone to look amazing. And I think that that's been like the biggest takeaway um, that we've been able to take from, from working with Jazz, working with Medusa, working with uh, Mickey, Gail, Kong. All these women have so much to still continue to offer to this business. And it's, it's amazing that it's being passed on to us so that we can hopefully pass it on to the next generation as well. Awesome. Yeah. And, you know, I, I think I speak more of as, as a fan, obviously, but, you know, you don't always have women producers. You know, you, mm -hmm. you, a lot of times the women division is that guy hands you a script or whatever, you know what I mean? So I think just having it all women, 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 I think it's going to be a, a, a stronger product, you know, uh, and especially not even including them being legends, obviously. Yeah, there's definitely a difference, I would say. Yes. Um not that men can't agent our matches, but there's just a difference. Mm -hmm. A woman's touch, if you will. Yeah. Right. Absolutely. And I, and that's kind of what Medusa led to when we talked to her, because she talked about working with you guys and had very, very, like, again, high praise, put you over to the moon and back kind of thing. And she said that was the thing. It was like, there's certain things that a guy can call in a match for, for a, a women's wrestling match. But like you said, Allison, like, there's that woman's touch to a woman's wrestling match mm -hmm. um and you kind of start to see that now after empower and hopefully we get more pay-per-views like that and you know uh, i guess around the same time that the the word came out you guys were defending your belts on roh television which we were like super pumped about we we're like holy shit like this is happening like they're going they're, everywhere Heck they're yeah. gonna go everywhere where are they gonna show up next is it gonna be an impact is it gonna be an AEW? we kind of got the devastating news of the uh the roh shuffle what were your reactions like uh, to that news? I mean, it's devastating. It's terrible. Um, 
I hope that they come back and I hope they come back stronger than ever. You know, we have a lot of friends there mm -hmm. that we, you never want someone to lose their job. I mean, unless you're a shitty troll on the internet, maybe you do, but you know, if you're a decent <laughs> human being. That's a toxic being, place right there. Yeah. It is a cesspool, but you know, um, you want, um, you never want to hear about someone having to lose their job. That's why I also just don't understand whenever fans, I guess, sometimes I don't even want to give them enough credit to call them fans when they uh, are so adamant about like the demise of a company or something, I just think that is so crazy to, to want people to lose their job. So, I mean, that aspect of it is, is horrible. We don't want that to happen. So hopefully they do come back and I hope everyone lands on their feet. We're excited to see where they go. They will. Mm -hmm. Well, and, I mean, especially ring of honor, they, they got high praise across the board for how they treated their employees during the, the pandemic. So yes. for anybody chiming in, like, you know, wishing for their demise, like that's so short sighted. I mean, they were incredible. They took care of their talent. They definitely to, took care of us yeah. too, as I guess guests you would call us, you know? Oh yeah. Um, they took such good care of us. And we I had that locker room. We had such positive experiences um, from the tournament to coming back uh, to doing tapings and defending the titles and all of that. Uh, so we, we love Virg of Honor. We love the women's division. Maria has done such an amazing job with making sure, you know, that their voices are heard. And and I, I wouldn't be surprised if you saw some familiar faces uh, from Ring of Honor at some point um, landing in NWA because there's so much talent there. And, you know, like AK said, it, it's just a matter of time to see where they land, not if they're going to land somewhere. Yeah. yeah. Well, this is kind of a, a pipe dream thing and you can, you know, let your imagination run wild. Um, you, since I, I guess we'd call it the second reboot of the NWA, you know, we're kind of back to live shows and obviously held the tournament. You guys are new champs. Where do you guys see the NWA in say three years? Worldwide domination. <laughs> <Worldwide. Yes. laughs> I'm just laughing because I know this question got asked recently on Twitter about a different company and someone answered it and got a lot of heat for it. Ooh. But um, oh. I'm I'm just I'm just smiling about that. But um, go ahead, Marty. You were gonna answer. <laughs> um, I I think I'm just I'm excited to see us traveling more. I definitely think that there will be a lot more um traveling. Uh, somebody we were just at WrestleCade this past weekend, and somebody said like, "Oh, I hope NWA comes to North Carolina," and I was like, "Oh yeah, at some point the NWA is 100 mm -hmm. going back to North Carolina." Like mm -hmm. you know. We haven't had a chance to wrestle in North Carolina for the NWA, but there's so much history there that it's definitely going to happen. Mm -hmm. um, I see the company growing. I see us. Um, I and that's the thing. I I that's a hard question to answer because we really don't know what Billy's goal is at the moment. You know, is it to be on on you know international television or is it to keep everything ourselves, keep things on fight? We we don't really know that aspect, but I definitely see it of uh, growing and building. Hopefully, traveling a lot more. Um, you know, when we won these titles, we said we're going to defend them all over the world. We're not just, we're going to make them world titles for a reason. And mm -hmm. what better way than, you know, to take the whole roster over to the mm -hmm. UK, take us to Europe, you know, take us to Japan. Africa, Asia, everywhere. Like mm -hmm. I'm, I'm ready to travel with the NWA. Um, and I, I feel like that's definitely in the near future. And that makes that you feel like, that, and that kind of makes you feel like it's that territory day. It's like, you're going wherever you go. Mm -hmm. Like we, uh, we had it. There was a show here in Nashville, uh, it was a couple of weeks back, and it was a CCW event. And Camille put the title on the line that night that she wrestled. Mm -hmm. And I think that's that's the cool thing about the NWA is like when Trevor Fighting Murdoch, champs. yeah, when Trevor Murdoch just put up his title defense after you know, you know, hard times and whatnot. It's like wherever he goes. That belt's on the line. Wherever y'all go, that belt's on the line, no matter what promotion is. And that's that's the fun part that we that we fell in love with the NWA because when when it came back as the resurgence, like it was that wrestling that we grew up watching. Mm -hmm. It was, you know, I, I didn't grow up on the studio wrestling. I grew up watching NWA at the, and that was Eli. I grew up on the NWA at the fairgrounds here in Nashville every, mm -hmm. every weekend at the, the sports arena uh i remember seeing so many things happen i i mean i was there when it was nwa tna when all that went down mm -hmm. and just the history of you know the nwa and it's great that you've got somebody like billy who is who is not only a brilliant mind uh all together right now 
but he's also a wrestling fan and he gets it. Mm-hmm. Oh yeah. It's in his blood. Every time we've talked to him, I mean, he'll get into it and it's just, whew, we're like, geez, you're like really into this stuff. Yeah. Um, he's a very, very smart man. Yeah. Yes. Did Ask you him guys... about race cars next time we talk to him? Oh, race cars? well, I play guitar and he, he's an influence. So I got to, it was kind of cool. I got to nerd out about that stuff nice. and get back into wrestling. Um, did you guys, did you guys have to fight uh, a lot of matches last year without an audience? Was that weird? I, I think... did actually, I think I got spoiled. I did primetime live when NWA was working with them yeah. over in California. I did mm-hmm. one show there against Nicole Savoy. And then I think we did the collective weekend shimmer blood sport. There were already fans there. Yeah. So um, I didn't have to do too many shows without an audience. Actually the ROH yeah. is where we've been wrestling without the audience. That was a big one. Yeah. yeah. A lot of people have just like y'all have been saying with the travel, just getting the crowds back. I mean, it's been, I mean, over the last year, a lot of our uh, talent we've interviewed, it's just been like, God it is so weird without a crowd. So we always try to ask people like what their opinion is of it without a crowd. I mean, is it definitely is it- don't prefer it. Yeah. I, I, yeah, I, I engage too much with the audience. Mm-hmm. So, I mean, we can do it. We've done it, yeah. but it's not, it's definitely not my preference to not have a it's crowd. It's definitely I not ideal. That crowd. You, yeah. we, we feed off the crowd so much. You, you definitely need that energy and, and backtracking. That's why Empower was such a magical um, show was having that, that, that crazy amount of fans there that was so into it. Mm-hmm. Um, and yeah, we're we're both talkers and we're both, you know, we, we really like to engage and make sure that the, the, the crowd is is in on it. So it is yeah. it is it is rough to do it without them, but um we're glad that uh it is becoming safe and in you know safer and safer in order to be able to have those crowds back. And that's yeah, the good thing. So as fans, we don't realize how I guess instrumental we are with that. So, you know, so it's, important. You know, a lot of a lot of times wrestling gets compared to you know, plays with live stunts or however you want to spin it. But a lot of those uh, comparisons, you know, like if you go to a play, like the crowd is not influencing it. You just sit there and watch. So Mm -hmm. it's not exactly the same thing, you Mm -hmm. know? So, uh, but uh, I mean, that's the rally cry right now is everyone's like, God, I can't, I'm so glad we're back in front of crowds. And and it was, it was, it was so wild because we went to, we just went to our first wrestling event couple months back when it was uh impacted what was it was it uh bound for glory or no no it was, uh, uh slime anniversary yeah yeah slime anniversary and... bound for glory is october yes. yeah that was in vegas that's right okay. yeah yeah they so, were in nashville for like a year so they did mm-hmm. i think it was slime anniversary was the one you're talking so about. that was that was our first show back and it was just like this weird experience back because it's like we didn't know what to do. And mm-hmm. I, I, we talked to, like Eli said, we've talked to several people and it's a complete different entity. Cause I went to a couple of the, the tapings when there was no fans there and they were just doing that. And I was like, it's a very odd, eerie. It's feeling. eerie. Yeah. And it, it's kind of, it's just, I was like, and I'm, you know, doing radio, I'd sit in a room and I talk to people. So I don't get that, you know, the interaction I get is through phone calls or whatever. But, you know, just like you said, you thrive on the fans. You thrive on them yelling and booing and cheering and all this other stuff. And when it's not there, it's like, okay, you got to be in this mindset of like, okay, that's piped in noise or this Mm -hmm. is that. So, like, I mean, how do you prepare for something like that heading into the no crowd matches? They're just a different style of match. So I don't know that necessarily the preparation is any different. It's just that. I think that like pure wrestling matches will do fine in front of no crowd yeah. or I guess gimmick matches where um, I think those might do well in front of no crowd too, because you have the audience at home that, you know, you know that they're going to be reacting to certain things a certain way, but for like a normal match, I just feel like we use the crowd so much. We, we change what we're going to do based on reactions. You know, mm-hmm. some, some things are longer, some things are shorter. And I don't know, just having done that for over a decade and then not having it anymore. It's like we lost a key tool, you yeah. know, so yeah. it just you just have to structure it differently. Um, it's just a different style and it's not a style that I like. <laughs> yeah, this and, is a sorry. I, I, I was going to get off on that subject. Uh, um, this is uh, we don't have it on the list, but it just popped up in my head. Um, one of the I don't know what you'd call it, uh, unlikely or uh i don't know surprising i don't know how what 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 word you want to use for it um uh eddie kingston's ascent over the last year i know you guys know him and obviously nwa alumni what's it been like seeing him 
I don't, I mean, there's some people comparing his run right now to Stone Cold from 20 years ago. I mean, what, what's it like seeing some that the, the peripheral underdog that's always scrapped. And I mean, he, I mean, he had, he had an arena of booing CM Punk. I mean, it's ridiculous. Mm-hmm. I mean, it, is it kind of one of those things where like people are finally seeing the magic of him? Yeah. We're so proud of him. Very. Um, we we love Eddie. Yeah. <laughs> and love Eddie like and, um, <laughs> <laughs> we're just First so all, excited to talk about eddie did yeah, you yeah. did you see my eddie kingston cosplay I'm i was sorry. about to bring that up i was gonna say i was gonna jump in there and be like what was eddie's first thought when you yeah. just like oh, sent him a selfie and be like whoa. Whoa. Yeah. i called him on my twitch live while Uh-oh. i was cosplayed as him um and his first reaction was ew <laughs> he said who did that his first reaction was who did that i'm like i did it what the fuck are you talking about <laughs> He thought it was disgusting. <laughs> like somebody attacked you and made you anything. <laughs> you were kidnapped, and that was the punishment. Yes, we I... love Eddie. Eddie is um, Eddie's like that annoying older brother, you know, who's like who's always looking out for us, but always like, uh, you know, like making fun of you and like mm-hmm. calling you gross or saying you're like, ew, you suck. But like literally, we'll always text us and be like, yo, you good? Like literally, I, I think at least like. Every other week, we get a message from Eddie and literally just says, you good? Um, and that's not like, oh, hey, yeah, Eddie, we're doing all right. How are you doing? I'm I. I'm I. Like, uh, I don't know. You know He's just... I'm about to put Eddie on blast. Uh-oh. I have a text from him on my birthday to show you what a sweet and caring person he is, even though <laughs> he likes to pretend. He likes to pretend and be like, ew, you're gross. Disgusting. Blah. Put like barfing emojis on our Instagram. <laughs> but Eddie Kingston texted me on my birthday and said, I love you and you are someone who I can never replace in my life. You are the true definition of a strong woman and I am so fucking blessed to have you as a friend. Happy Whoa. born date, my French vanilla. Oh, hey. this is going to be this is going to be an exclusive Twitter video hey. right there. We'll tag yeah. Eddie in and see what he says. You're about to go find your Eddie stuff. <laughs> hold on. Uh, I don't, I don't, I don't, hold on. I just is... had to walk to find this because I literally keep it by my bed. So, uh, is it a handwritten note? Ago, I uh, got cast on this uh, on this uh, TV show uh, for, for it was called Exato Long. It's uh, on Telemundo, and Eddie and I um, were on a show the night. It was like three days before I was leaving, and um, Eddie needed a place to like just shower and crash for a few hours before he went to the airport. And I was like, "Of course you can crash with me." So I fell asleep. I woke up. He was gone, but I had a note. <laughs> <laughs> Horrible handwriting, the worst. <laughs> I already read the end of it. It says, I love you and become the star everyone knows you are. <laughs> Fuck you. <laughs> Dang. So See, he, he can pick on you guys, but if someone else picks on you, he yes. steps in. Yes. yes. And, yeah. You know, and I saw this on Twitter and I think he responded back to it, but like all the TikTok thing is the, uh, the bing bong guys and all that. Mm-hmm. So now every time I see those videos, I think of Eddie Kingston because somebody yeah. said, this is what an Eddie Kingston <laughs> promo is. And then he responded to it. And I was just like, I can't, I can't, yeah. not can't unsee it. that yeah. now. Yeah. And yeah. now no, we love Eddie. We are so happy for him. We're so proud of him. Um, this has so been, deserved. you know, so he, long overdue. Yes. Yeah. He's been grinding for so long. Um, and we just, we could not be happier uh, for him and, and just so just, just happy. I don't even know what to say. Yeah. We're, yeah. Just, we're, just, we're, we're elated for our friend. I've for almost sure. got my wife into wrestling. Um, I showed her him and Brian Danielson. And when it was over, she was like, my heart is racing. I was like, yeah, that's real shit. And then I showed her the promo with her, him and punk and then the, the punk match. And she's like, I'm, I'm an Eddie guy now. And then when I came back from the show in Kentucky and showed her this, she's like, wait, that's a tag team. I was like, yeah. She's like, uh okay you may need to pull them up so like <laughs> i may need to check this out yeah slowly <laughs> slowly getting the, the wheels rolling but i mean like nice. I, you know and then i showed her some stuff uh i think it was like um some of some of eddie's class you know some of the big feuds he's had and she's like i said yeah n- n- you know not all wrestling is wwe kitty crap i mean this stuff is she's like well when he talks i feel it like Oh yeah, because it's because that's he's authentic, it. and that's, that's why it that's works. The point. Yeah, exactly. He's authentic. He was in the right place at the right time. It only took what twenty years. <laughs> <He was in laughs> right. The right place at the right yeah. time. Yeah, he struggled so much to get there, and it's the authenticity that people resonate mm-hmm. with. And I think that's also why we get along. 
yeah. by the three of us. And then another like smaller group of our friends, why we all get along is just, I mean, not trying to put ourselves over too, but like, I just yeah. feel like, I just feel like we keep it real. And that's, yeah. that's why it resonates with people. That's why it works. Mm-hmm. And, and, you know, again, talking about keeping it real, this is an episode where we're putting you guys over. And of course this weekend, hard times two Saturday fight, 7 PM Eastern. The, the, this is a, this is kind of a tough question because you've already kind of got the NWA women's tag team championships. Mm-hmm. But what are the goals for the Hex going into 2022? I mean, you've already got that gold. First, I do want to say it's not just hard times this weekend. Don't forget, it's also power taping. So we're going to be at Atlanta for four days, I think, three or four days. mm -hmm. There's also a new NWA program that we don't even know what the hell it is. So I'm very excited to see what that's all about. (laughs) So uh, hard times, obviously the pay-per-view, that's what you can watch streaming. But power, you can watch if you come to the the fallout. Otherwise, you got to wait. Who wants to wait? Mm. Come watch us live. what was the question again? Oh yeah. What do you want to do? <laughs> What's the goal for you for, for y'all? That was a good company response though. That, that it was. was very good. And here's, very the, good. here's, here's very the other good. thing that before we jump into that, the one thing I've noticed that's really great about NWA is they've done these tapings in like for a month, right? They do them on the weekend. Nothing gets leaked out. Very few leaks. It's that I mean, studio audience. They yeah. I mean, we you oh, literally yeah. have to watch every Tuesday, or you don't know. I mean, even the dirt sheets. I mean, I think that they'll they'll list the the matchups, you know. But I mean, mm-hmm. I I almost never see spoilers for the for the programs. Our fans are amazing, especially the studio. The people that are in the studio, it's such a small space, you know. Yeah. It's so it's not like we're selling thousands of tickets because we want mm-hmm. no like. It's such a limited amount of people that if you get tickets, it's because you really want to be there. Yep. People are there to die. enjoy themselves. Mm-hmm. People are there to to actually live the moment. So I think that's why that's why like the NWA fans are so amazing. Um, and to answer your question, uh, we're gonna hex we're gonna hex in the city and hex the world. <laughs> yes, hashtag Ooh. hex in the city. Um, one of our amazing fans, Dave Muscarella came up with that hashtag on my Twitch one night where I was like, what is our hashtag for our, our tour? Like, not that we have a tour lined up or anything, but you know, the tour is bound it. to happen eventually. Right. Like, what should we call it? One person said, um, what was the other one? Maybe it was Hex the World. Hex the World, we figured, can be international. That's our, Hex yeah, in the that's city, our international tour. Which if you don't get it, it's a play on sex in the city yes. uh hex yeah. in the city, <laughs> what, what's sex in people, the city never seen that show before. yeah, yeah. <laughs> hex in the city to tell us what city you want to see us in what promotions you want to see us in um we had a lot of people saying hex in tex they want to see us oh, come to texas mm-hmm. which i would love mission pro needs to book us mm-hmm. so we can take their those little Ooh. girls those little girls tag championships <laughs> they trying to flex on us um Not gonna yeah happen. we want to we want to go all around the world with nwa but also without we can go on our own too like we just want to mm-hmm. go everywhere we want to go over to the uk um, the Europe, the Europe, the Europe, <laughs> the <There> everywhere, <laughs> the Europe, the, the, the everywhere, you know, the that Africa, the Europe, over there. The like number yeah. one on my list. And I know it is not practical right now. It's not possible right now is Japan. I know that's not going to happen right now. Maybe that's why I just, it's number more one because Europe. I want it to happen so bad. Um, more realistically sooner would be Europe or mm-hmm. the Europe, if you like the to Europe. call it that. And so we just want to go everywhere together. Yeah, and the NWA had a has a rich history in Japan um, up to a point, and so it's probably long overdue. You know, um, I mean, there's there's so much good stuff happening over there right now. Um, so, what was the next question we were going to do? <laughs> um, oh, yeah, okay. Well, I think we're about wrapped up. So, where can people keep up with you guys online? Um, martybell.com, M-A-R-T-I-B-E-L-L-E has, um, all of my, uh, my merch available. Uh, I have a Patreon, patreon, uh, com slash martybell. But, um, what I use the most, is that going to be one of my kitties? Uh-oh. No. <laughs> oh, I thought it was, I thought Frida was coming in the room. No, I was going to say our new merch. Oh, yeah. yeah. Wearing one anyway, you have it. You're advertising it for us. <laughs> look at that mine didn't come in the mail yet so i i have one coming soon so we got new trade <gasps> cards there's a marty bell one too that she has uh, okay. how do i get now, how do i, I get didn't some see of those? those i when i saw you guys in kentucky i didn't see those these are new new this brand, is that new, new. Oh, brand new okay from last weekend so okay. we will have i would have bought those that night at um at adam uh nwa this weekend and then um if we have anything left over it'll get thrown on our websites and right. allison k you can find her on allisonk.com um since she was busy plugging our merch we've got stickers we've got some new hex stickers 
new speakers. Oh, now we I really need to book a, book a trip to Ooh, Atlanta nice. now for this weekend. Like yes. we, it was, it was kind of one of those ones when we found out about it, I was like, oh, let's go to Atlanta. And then both of us were like, oh, we can't make it this weekend, which is a bummer. But uh, hopefully we can snag some of that stuff after it's up online if nobody grabs it. Because I really, I've got some space back here in the new home studio. So I've got to put some uh, hex yeah. merch up there, some autograph stuff. So yes, definitely we will have, have to- it this weekend. Also, the following weekend, um, Shine. We're going to be at Shine Wrestling. And then it will go online eventually. Where we are also tag team champions, but. Oh yeah, you know, no big deal. Just getting no all deal. the gold, so we'll we'll go after that. We're going we'll little go... uh, Ultimo Dragon belt collectors. It sounds like. Listen, these belts are heavy, and it is stressful carrying them through the airport because I can't check them, and mm-hmm. I have to make sure that they're in a bag that's not going to get gate checked either, because I don't want them to get checked mm-hmm. at all. Like mm-hmm. even if they just like you know you know the gate check thing where they yeah. just like throw it under the plane because the bag's too big. I don't want to carry these in a backpack. It's heavy. I'm like, mm-hmm. you know what? People don't realize the struggle of being multi champion. Yeah. What is, what is it like I'm when you're there. going through TSA? What do they say when they see that through like the x-ray or whatever? They're like, so my what? strategy is I always take the bag. So I put my belts in a special bag, like Marty mentioned. Yeah. I always take that bag out of my suitcase to put through the scanner separately, because if you don't, it gets pulled every single time. Yep. And sometimes it takes them forever to actually check your bag and you're trying to get to your gate mm-hmm. because all they see is a big black circle on their screen mm. and they're like what the hell is that mm-hmm. she definitely has a bomb so they always pull the bag <laughs> so now i just set it separately and then i always see them when it comes through to where they can actually like go grab it they'll always be like what? oh okay i guess sure whatever yeah <laughs> well yesterday i had time and, and i had so i had both belts and i had my laptop in there and the line was like super backed up and i was like whatever i'm just gonna run it and so of course they pull it and I see um, the one guy who's like sitting talking to the girl. He's like, <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, uh huh, okay. I was just standing there, like, yeah. is this your bag? I was like, yep. And then she's like, did you beat somebody up for this? <laughs> and I'm like, I mean, yeah. Yeah, and yeah several like, people my actually. Bag and she sees one of them. Um, I have a, a Dominican Republic patch in there. And she goes, put it in and I was like, yeah. She's like, I? And I was like, yep. <laughs> I, I, You're about to be there for 30 minutes. Yeah, yeah. Like, I, I do got to go. But yeah. um, a no, lot I of mean, it, it is usually either they're just like, oh. Or I, I yeah. Or, or sometimes they'll be like, oh, that's really cool. Like, I'm like, that's yeah. cool. But or I they'll really. They'll do this. They'll do one of these. <laughs> yeah, from their seat. You get to see that they're looking at you like, who? which, which person's belt is this? They're like trying to figure out who's it. Yeah. Is. Like, yeah. Girl, what the hell? Yeah. <laughs> Oh that, man, that's, that's funny. That is wild. Well, uh, Marty and Allison, thank you uh, so much for being on the show again uh, this weekend. Hard times, of course. Also, the NWA power tapings are going down. NWA hard times is going to be on fight seven o'clock this Saturday, and uh, you're going to see boom, boom, the boom, hex boom. defend those titles and remain at the end of the night. Still, NWA oh, women's yeah, a little AK forty seven. I like that. Yeah, I don't think that's how that one shoots, but you know what? We're just gonna go with it. Go with it, and if that uh, tells you I don't know anything about guns. You're probably I don't, I don't know if you're right or not. Who knows? I don't so know. we joke it could be one of those. Like, I don't know. Whatever. We talk about this all the time, but AK and I are such different people because I did not realize you were holding it like a gun. I was like, oh, <laughs> well, I did this. <laughs> oh no! I was like, oh, it's beautiful. Yeah. <laughs> oh man this is great stuff and so uh real... like, joe i know you're trying to wrap up but now i'm just rambling no so this is fun. long thoughtful instagram captions like me and my yes. best friend and we did that we do this together and it means so much and i'll be like this is my main bitch like just like real <laughs> short and sweet that's it or Those even just emojis. how we react to people in person it's yeah <laughs> <laughs> that is amazing yeah uh, it was funny because like when i met you on kentucky you were like do you want to hold the belt i was like nope you want to put it on your shirt nope do you want to? Like, no, no. And then I was finally like, let me just hold the shirt up. I was like, I don't know what I want to do. I just want to, whatever, you know. I don't know what to do with my hands. That's how yeah. I'm about to do it. Okay. I, I was kind of like, what do I do? I don't know. Yeah. So. Oh, uh, there's been plenty of times that that's happened to me that uh, with radio stuff, we had, uh, we did an event with Justin Bieber and I'm like, what am I supposed to do? Like, he was doing this. So I'm like, do I throw up the peace sign? Do I like, what am I supposed to do? And, I just kind of sat there and looked like a goofy kid. And I was like, AK has her pinky. I'm always like this. I'm like, (laughs) thumbs up. Like if you ever watch us when we come out, sometimes I'm like, number one, I, I, I haven't, I haven't settled yet on on things. Like hashtag. I don't know. Hex. I don't know. Hex. What what should our new, that's an H wait, this is an H. I don't, 
That's with the a. pinky. With the. <laughs> We're gonna figure this out. Somebody's gonna watch us and be like, "This is what they should do." Please uh -huh. and thank you. We have a cool handshake, but I need like a a hand thing to do when we're coming out so yeah. yes i was so, trying to think of form something form like a, a with our arms or something i don't know yeah there's what, something that can what do i, I do know, with whatever. my hand like maybe we can do this is this already taken there you go, there you <laughs> go. No, it's an x i feel like that's new yeah that's you should trademark that i was thinking like you know like okay you know but the, there you go do it with the go. pinkies there you go I, I mean that's not it. terrible. We'll, we'll work. You are professionals. <laughs> I'm sure you can come up with it. Yeah. We're just we're just the guys that talk on the radio. But again, Marty and Allison, thank you so much for coming on the show. Uh, definitely gonna have to get you back on, and hopefully we can get another NWA show uh, in Nashville, or Clarksville again. So he That'd can be see amazing. the belts in person. Yeah. Yes. They're they're incredible. Yes. Thank you for having us. And thank you guys. Being on. We'll be well. You'll be watching this Saturday. We'll be fighting people. <laughs> Bang. Retaining, retaining. <laughs> that, that was very smooth. We'll be fighting people. <laughs> Pinky's up. <laughs>